Hello, my friend. Uh, hopefully, you are doing great. So, in previous lesson, you almost got the knowledge how to interact with elements on the screen. It's not all the APIs uh, that we have in Web Driver IO, but basically, you can use them uh, for automation tests. So, from now on, I want to introduce a very important principle in automation tests that is page object. So, what is page object? Let me try to show you something first. For example, you have an application, and on that application, you have a form, like a login form here. So you have around 10 test cases, for example, and in every test case, you need to input email, password, and click on the login button. So just go back to one of our test script before to see what happened, for example, here. So it's in not a login form. Let me see where we can here is the login. Uh, not this one, email test element. <coughs> email test field here, something like that. So, for example, uh, in your test case, you call the email test field here, you see, and then you input something. And then in another test case, you call this field again. That means you declare the selector again. So what's happened if one day that selector value change? That means you need to go to every single place where you use to update the locator. That should be a nice mail if in a very big small project and you need to go to maybe hundreds place to replace to replace it. Maybe you can use some test editor and replace it, but it's not a good idea. So what is pay object? Pay object is a concept in automation test that's where you reflect a screen or um, a web page or a part of screen or a part of web page to a class in programming language. And then uh, you are going to reduce in other places. So that means when there's something change on the party, particular element, you need to update in one one place and that will affect to all the places. So let's start with something on the login form here to see how how can we reflect a screen to a page object? Okay, so let's start. So the first thing you need to do that uh, under the your root project here, you see, and instead of go to API like before, now you need to create a folder with the name source. Uh, of course, you can create any folder name, but uh, you know, um, just kind of a common things that uh, people often contain on the uh, testing resource on the folder with the name src here, and we call it the source. And under this source folder, you create another directory with the name page object or page. So in this case, I will put it as page object for you to, uh, to understand easier, okay? So what's uh, what should we create under the page object here? So it depends. It depends on what? On your application. So basically, under the page object, you will create folder uh, matches with your application uh, functionality. For example, this is for login. This is for sign up, right? So power of them uh, are related to something like account in your project. So you probably have uh, a folder with the name account here for the account function in your project, right? So you can see, create a folder, a directory with the name source and under source, we have page objects and under page object, you can create another folder that's matched to your functional uh, application in, in your application. So in this case, you can create something like a count. So we have a login form and a sign up. 
So let's create a simple page of chat box for the login form. Okay. So in account, I right click and navigate to new, and then I will navigate to JavaScript file here with the name login. And you have another file here, login.trayat, right? Under account folder. So let's specify a class. So in ES6, we have class here. So class login with the name, it should be matches with the, the file name. You can name another name, but just for pet plastic, you know, you need to name, that's a magic with the name, with the file name here. So this is the class name, okay? So what we have in this class, the first thing you need to do that you need to declare all the selector value on the page. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to inspect the email field, password field, and the login button here on the login page, right? So the first got that here, you need to declare, <laughs> sorry for the noise around uh, because this play in a while. Hopefully you can hear my voice clear. So uh, the first step we need to declare, declare what? Declare a uh, selector value on the page, right? So the first value should be a constant because we are not going to change this in our application. So it should be constant, not a, not a variable. So you can declare a variable with the keyword less uh, for ES6. So from before ES6, my, I, I mean ES5, you can declare a keyword var like this, but it doesn't matter. So in this case, we are going to declare a constant because we are not going to change that selector value in our application running time, right? So the first here is constant should be email test field. And you left it as blank here, and then you will put the selector value later. So the second uh, uh, element selector value should be password test field, right? And then you left it as plain again. So, and the last one should be uh, login button here. Then here inside the class, uh, what we are going to do that we create uh, there's many, you know, many design button for um, many design buttons for page object, but I will try to share you one by one. Okay, so this is the first design button, uh, the first concept that we will introduce the gesture to guess the element that is found from the screen, and then we can use in other places. So let's we have a guest that get email email text field, right? We have email text field. And I will return what I will return the element that I found that is found on on the on the screen. So in this case I'm going to find the email text field and then I will return it, right? But before returning it, we need to wait until that element is displayed on the page, right? Because if you return while it's not displayed, it will raise an error. So we need to, as a bad plastic, you need to wait until the element is displayed on the page before returning it. So let's wait until that element is displayed, okay? So, display uh, wait for display and we have option that's a something like timeout and we will wait uh, around uh, five seconds here and we do the same thing for password and login field so in this case we have a password test field right password test field and we return 
the password test field you just do the same thing like you have just done with the email test field and the last one should be uh, the login button right here so it should be uh, get login button and we have a login button here to wait and return so uh, you can see the uh, the get the get keyword here that will declare a get store right if you declare a guest and we want to return return in this case the element that we find find out on the page okay so uh and the final step we need to export uh the class and then we can use in all the places so just let export the four new login so that means we need to export an instant. Okay, it's very important here. You're going to export an instant, not a class. So when you export an instant, you don't need to create uh, an instant in another place and use. Of course, you can export a class and then you can uh, create uh, a new instant and then you can use, but you don't need to do that in this case, in this design button, okay? So let's go back and fill out, uh, fill out the uh, selector values for email password and login button. So you may need to copy from uh, in all the lessons. Let me find out where, where did we do it here. So we just need to copy those values from all the lessons and put it here and we have the emails password and the final one is the login button right right here okay so basically we have just completed a paste object for a very simple design button let me open the screen for you so you can see how can we reflect it so we call it base or this screen is the login bay or login screen here and you see what we have first we need to declare all of the selector value here we have the email test field we have password test field and we have login button and then we uh, fill out all of the selector value that you find out from the Appium desktop application. So the inside the class body, you will introduce the guest to, to return the element that you, you find on the screen. But before doing that, you need to wait until that element is displayed. And in this case, you will wait for display one of API that we already knew in order lesson, right? And with the maximum timeout is 5,000. It doesn't mean that it will wait till 5,000, but as soon as possible, when it's 5,000 that element on the page with the interval time is 500 milliseconds, it will return that element for use to you in order places, right? So let's try to create a, a new test script and then we can use uh, this base object, okay? So under the source folder here, you create a new folder with the name test script, okay, test script. And under the test script folder, you need to create, um, you need to create some directories, some folder that script uh, based on your application functionality. So in this case, you want to test for account, right? So let's see that this will be account here, right? So you need to test some tech case for account. So let's see, uh, the first tech case should be test case 001 and we have something like login, right? We want to test something like that, login. 
maybe we need to refactor and rename it to another name. That's the uh, login, uh, just be paste, paste object zero. That means we are going to use the base object, the side button with the type, type one, not zero, with the type one, because we have something um, different with all the design button, but just keep it like this first, okay? So I call it the page object one, and we refresh the. So inside is, uh, we just create another text suite, and in that text suite, we will have that cases like before. So let me declare the criteria, and we insert a decry block for a text suite here. So it should be something like the login function, right? We are talking that thing for the login function, or maybe the account function, something like that. And we are going to insert a test script block here, and choose a login a should raise an error for from credential. Credential. Okay. So you can try to replace this to a route function. I often do that. But if you you want to keep the function like that, it will be uh, that will not affect to your running script. And then now before 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 creating the test the test step inside, you need to import because here you see you export here and oh, the, the bad way video too. Yeah, don't go on. Sorry, sorry, my friends, because uh, the kids just keep playing around. <laughs> okay, so let's import it. So let's import, uh, we call import login from. So here we are going to import the login base. We can name it any name we want here. So we are going to import the login base from where? So let's see. Here we need to go back one level, two level first. Okay, go back one level. Dot dot slot. Dot dot slot. That means two level. And then there is a succession. There is a su succession from the IDE, but you need to understand why it's like that from here, you see, you go back one level, two level, and here one level, that's mean dot dot slot, dot dot slot, two level, and then you go to paste object, you go to account, yeah. and then you go to login here, okay? So paste object, go to account, and then you go to the login here. Okay, just a moment. My friends, uh, the kids, they just keep playing around. Okay, just a moment. Okay, so here you don't need the the file extension.js because um, the application will understand that you are going to import a JS file. So you don't need to declare JS here. But in case you would do something like that, it will not fail you, okay? So we import it here and we are going to use it, right? So let's go back to our application here. Before, uh, because uh, uh, by default, our application will open the home page here, right? So you, you need to click on the, the login icon first, right? So, uh, but because we, we we don't have that page object till now, so just you like the traditional way before, like click, and then we will create another page object for this navigation part. Okay. So first, we need to click on the login icon from home page, and from the second step, we are going to use login paste object to interact to interact uh, with 
element, right? So here we will call something like login page dot dot what here we will call the gesture email test field and then we will do something like uh, set value and in this case I'm going to set the value something like uh, T uh, E O something like that just random because I want to make it fail right and then for the best work here best work test field and I will left it empty right because I want to test in the case that we have uh, wrong credentials right and the last step that I call login paste dot login button dot click right that should be the the last step so you see we can call the the guest from page object here so in future if we have something changed here on the email I just need to go back here and I will update here and it will affect here so for example I have around a uh, dozen packet and I use this login space so I need to check to go back to the login day and update the selector value or some something change from the business follow so that should be easier and that's why we need paste object right so and then uh, finally we need to wait a little maybe just two seconds by principle two seconds to see the screen this result right so the first step we need to click on the login icon so let's see where we have it mm, should be in the set value here we have the login icon on home screen here just copy and paste it here so let's see we will have something like uh, login icon home screen and then we dot click here right and then and then we we view code pay object okay look good try to run it so you know the first thing uh let me try something here the first thing we need to start appium server right the second thing that you need to make sure uh you connect the device right and the last thing you need to check the configuration file so this is the server side and this is the client side you need to make sure that everything is okay before starting your test so uh in this case uh just wait a moment So in this case, we need to change, uh, we need to start the Appium server. So you can open the Appium desktop application and start the Appium server. So for me, I will do something like, uh, I will start Appium server by from the command line, something like Appium. And by default, it will start on the port uh, 4723. Uh, but if you want to specify another port, just to the hyphen p and you can specify another part value something like 7 20, 47 26 something like that so just let it at default for uh, the appium server can start on the part 47 23 okay so just wait a moment and then the appium server can start so while waiting for the FPM server spark, so we can go to our test configuration. So right now we just need to replace. Or in future maybe we will get uh, things different a little, and then I will share you how to use some share test configuration file later. But now just do it. So here uh, we need to navigate to the short folder first, right? Short folder. Oh, what's that? Here. I need to boost my cursor here so shoot folder and then we go to test script folder right 
press script and then we go to account folder and we will copy here copy the name uh let me see i'm going to copy the name rename copy you can do different ways but for me i can do that way okay so dot try it so here you need the extension dot try it okay so this is target and we already stopped the FBM server and I have the device connected to my laptop as well. So just run the test like you did before by specify command npm run uh, npm test and um, the test configuration file. Up, uh, something wrong. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's the cell in this. This not make any file. So let's see what's it from here. So we have the source folder, source folder, right? And then we have test script, test script. Oh, this is price script. But I put something wrong like typo here, it's not script and we missed something here. So just try to refactor and rename to script. Uh, something like this. Yeah. Okay, and run test again. Yes, now okay. And it send the capability and the information to the FPM server to open the visual app to make sure that we can run the test Now it's going to terminate this current uh, screen and then relaunch the new application screen. You can see it's from the Appium control lock here. Here, then it's view going to click on the login form, input email, uh, password, and click on login button. You see, and we wait till two seconds and it's run successfully. So uh, today is a very important lesson. Uh, even we just uh, created a very simple pay of chat, but I need you to do again and practice, try to understand and leave any comment if you don't understand anything. Because if you don't understand how to create a page object in the next lesson should be a topper for you. It's a very important concept, it's not in this series, but you will see everywhere in automation test with Selenium, with Appium, we face paste object a lot of places because it's useful for us as I explained for you. So try to keep learning and see you in the next lessons.